Safety first, no glasses on. Smart guy, eh? Oh yeah, that's awesome. Woo! Oh, gotta love it. It's rain in creosote. Oh yeah, awesome. That felt good. That felt real good. Well, welcome back. This is going to be a little bonus footage, I guess, uh, for this week. It's actually a Wednesday today, and we're actually heading back to the woods. And there's a reason that I have to head back here today, because we're coming back again on the weekend. But I have to correct something over here uh, before we actually come back over on the weekend. So, the last couple times we were here, my wood stove was starting to backdraft fairly bad when I would light it. And the last time we were here, it got real bad to the point that anytime I tried to open the door, the smoke was rolling out of her. So it's quite evident my chimney is starting to plug up somewhere. Now, is it directly related to my chimney oven, my hot box I just built? That I don't think has caused the problem, but I think it's finished off the problem. The reason is, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a couple years since I've actually cleaned the chimney. Uh, I only use this place on the weekends. It only burns a day or two a week, so I was thinking you should be able to go, you know, quite a while. But anyways, I am admitting it, and don't be too hard on me because yes, I know, chimney fire risk, all the other stuff. Uh, anyways, we're heading over here today to clean the chimney. It's gonna be funner to clean the chimney because the issue is I can't get on the roof. Uh, I don't have a ladder adequate and I'm definitely not getting on an 812 pitch roof metal roof in the winter with nobody helping me. I'm alone today. So what I'm gonna have to do is try to do this from inside on a ladder with a garbage can held underneath and the chimney brush. Now this alone could be a really good screw up with Davy Dum Dum addition. So you guys might want to stay tuned and actually watch this. I have no idea what's going to happen, what's going to come out of this, but it could be and very well be an absolute adventure for me. But this is called Sparky's 506 Adventures. Uh, anyways, and on top of this all, the chimney oven is coming off the stove. The pipe is getting all unhooked, and I'm actually hooking a bypass on that chimney oven. So I've got a couple six inch elbows, a couple six inch T's, which I honestly didn't even know existed. They actually do. So there's gonna be a T below it, a T above it, and there's gonna be a bypass pipe on the rear with a damper. The only time that oven will really need to take all the heat and the smoke is when it's gonna be used. Most of the time, the smoke will be allowed to bypass and it should really cut down on creosote buildup if that's what my problem is. But again, sorry about being long-winded. Uh, oh yeah, and by the way, we'll check out the roads. I didn't even mention this yet. Guess what it did last night? Oh yeah, you know, here we go back again in uh, southern New Brunswick. We had another 15 centimeters or so of snow. And it's plus two right now, which is what, 34, 35 Fahrenheit? So it's gonna get sticky, it's gonna get heavy quite quick. So anyways, I hope my next report is standing in the building talking to you guys. So. Hang in there for the trip. This could be quite an adventure, and uh, we're going to talk to you very soon. Like, honestly, how beautiful is that? Check it out. Beating off the sides of my truck, too, is the worst part. Hard on the paint. Thank goodness for good tires, is all I can say. And a strong will to get to the cabin. And here we are, back to my favorite place in the whole wide world. You gotta like it. We did her. Well, here we are. I uh, made it back in, no problem at all. Uh, nice to be back in here. Nice to see the bird feeders are actually still about half full of seed. And I got a great big gray jay, I think they call it out there right now in the suet. Love to get a picture for you guys, but I'm, I'm not going to change the camera settings right now. I've got to get to work. What i got to do, move a bunch of furniture and all that here, uh, the TV picture, because this is where i got to work, all in this area here. So I have to kind of make a little bit of room here because there's going to be a bit of a mess, I'm sure, going down here in a while when I start pulling these pipes apart. Um, I'm just going to zoom up a bit and show you what I'm dealing with here. 
see way up here well this run of pipe here i get a feeling probably has lots of creosote and probably that elbow right there so what i have to try to do is uh, i'm going to unhook this elbow off that pipe i'm going to hold a garbage can i brought a metal garbage can under it and lord willing i hope this doesn't totally make a huge mess here but i'm going to hold the garbage can and i'm going to slowly go up in from the bottom uh, with the cleaning brush and two or three times and hopefully get all that out then we're going to have to take this pipe outside and clean that all out i'll probably have to take the elbow off at least one end of it and uh, clean everything out then when that's all done the hot box has to come off and that's going to be modified because like i told you guys on the way over i've got a, a set up here to put a bypass on the back of this thing so that's going to help quite a bit too so check it out should be an adventure first part of the project is underway here i have the uh, furniture moved obviously Get out my nice little multi-ladder thing here that I use quite a bit. And we're going to take some screws out of this pipe to start. And I think what I want to do is undo that end first and knock that up so that's just sitting there because if this end when I take this last I don't think there's gonna be a lot of weight in here but if there is this may want to drop down I could end up with a real disaster here so I'm gonna stay a step ahead of myself because again this doesn't need to end up another Davy Dum Dum episode it really doesn't now the fact that I'm cleaning my chimney in March well that's a Davy Dum Dum episode anyway I guess on its own all on its own so my bad but we're going to find out how much this is actually affecting it and if it's affecting it a lot as far as flow rate well the bypass is going to definitely cure that problem so should be good to go alrighty now I'm going to undo this connection here set these screws somewhere that works they're pretty black all right, not like that. Yep, it's already not good. Okay. Let's get this door off of here. Just in case, because I'm going to protect this. The only piece of glass I have for that. So That's the pyro ceramic stuff, they call it. It's pretty expensive to buy. It's not cheap. I just lucky I had a piece of it. So anyway, time to go a little deeper. Yeah, wish me luck. I'm going to go up and just keep going, I guess, and take this off. We're going to see how bad it actually is. I'm going to put this here. And I've got an old sheet here that we bring over to keep the dog from getting the couch dirty we're just going to kind of cover some stuff up here because I don't need to make a huge mess alright because after all Shelly calls me messy Dave sometimes for whatever reason alright guys I'm heading up here let's try this this could be interesting that last screw it's over here. The tension builds. I don't know what I'm going to find in here. I really don't. I'm not going to find anything tightening it. Okay, that's out. This is where it may get fun right here. Oh, 
look at that. No huge mess. Ow. Shelly would be so proud of me. She'll be so proud of me. I haven't spilled anything out of this yet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hang in there. This is going outside, right back. It's off to a really good start. And there is lots of creosote in it, I can hear it. It's quite heavy for what I got here, so I'm thinking there's quite a bit in this thing. Quite heavy for what I got. Holy shit is it ever. Yeah. Wow. Well, I can tell you guys, that wasn't that bad. Wow, and you know what? I gotta shoot the camera up and show you guys. This is impressive. I'll be honest, this chimney hasn't been cleaned in a few years. I'm gonna show you something. Check this out. I don't know if you guys can actually see up that or not. There's barely any creosote at all in that chimney. Barely any. Enough to block the flow a bit, yes, but barely any. I thought that would be almost blocked off up there. It's got to be the side pipe that I just took outside. That's a really bad one. We'll find out in a minute here. Well, I've got the brush already started up in the hole. Let's hold the garbage can under this and see what kind of mess we can make here. I'm going to try it from the floor first. It's going to fall right in it, I'm hoping. Not bad so far. It ain't the best, but I'm getting most of it. Safety first, no glasses on. Smart guy, eh? Wow. <laughs> Okay, we gotta put an extension on. It's making a mess, but it's not as bad as I thought it might actually be in here. It's not dusty, it's just creosote's kinda of sticky, right? So let's put on an extension, go for broke. And I'll just clean up the mess. Because again, I've been called messy Dave at times. That's what Shelly likes to call me. Here we go again. Right up in. Right up in. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Woo! Oh, gotta love it. It's rain in creosote. One more time. And we're getting this actually. It's not too bad, guys. I thought it could be worse. There. That's right to the top. That is awesome. That's the worst part already done. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a difference. It is a little better now, I guess. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm glad I got you guys here for this. It's going to be a little bonus episode, I guess. We'll be put... Uh, I may even throw it up Sunday. I already have a video for Saturday. Maybe I'll put this up on Sunday. But anyways, that's cool. I'm going to broom, get the broom, sweep some of this up. Could have been worse. Well, this is going to be interesting because we're going to clean out the pipe. We're going to find out how much stuff is in it. And I get a feeling there's a little bit in here. <laughs> I'm going to uh, try to keep it on the garbage can if I can. So we just kind of get an idea. It's pretty heavy for what it is, I think. Oh, 
going to take this end off, I think, for now. And then I'm going to put my brush through it. Clean this all out. Nice old dirty work coat on there that I usually wear in my shop and I'm working at home. This is not a clean job. Oh yeah, lots in there, boys. Boys and girls, it's pretty dirty. This pipe is, yeah, this pipe's pretty bad inside. I'm not gonna lie to you. Let get down this way. Wow. Oh boy. Yeah, she's pretty uh, pretty plugged up, guys. Pretty plugged up. Not gonna lie to you. Yes, sir. Wow. So yeah, down there. Let's see how far we can get in again. Oh yeah, awesome. That felt good. That felt real good. There we are. That was all the way in, right? Yeah, that's right down in. Alrighty. Embarrassed to show you guys what's in this garbage can. Yeah, there's quite a bit in that. <laughs> Can't say there wasn't. I'm not gonna lie to you. Wow, wow, wow. She, uh, we're lucky we didn't have a chimney fire, guys. Very lucky. That's pretty bad. I should have never let it get that bad. But again, the bypass, when I install it, is going to totally help this situation, so. That will be next, once we uh, clean up these other pieces. Just an elbow. Yeah. Dirty stuff to work with, eh? Dirty, dirty. Dirty, 30. This goes right there like that. Right there. Yeah, easy as that, boys and girls. Now, we have to clean out the box. And I think there's lots in the box. Because I think it slid from this pipe down and ended up in the box, is what kind of happened there. So we're going to see here in a minute. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. That's not the hole that was in. There we go. So that's on. Okay, now, boys and girls, this has some in the top of it. I can see that right now without even looking in it. There's a bunch in there. So, yeah, there is a lot in there. I'm not going to say there isn't. I'm probably going to build another one of these, and it's going to be round. The square restricts it too much I think it gets hot again the bypass is going to cure all these issues I've had with this one this is just a proof of concept thing anyway so don't uh, get too bent out of shape if I have issues with this it's already proven itself that it can work so and it's just uh, how to clean it out this is the issue that's just a piece of half inch plate I get in there's a bit of a heat sink Makes it a little heavier too. But anyway, let's. Uh... And most of it's already come out of there. It's not that hard to get it out of here. Yeah, it's not all plugged up in there at all. It was 
the stuff all come out of the pipe. There, there's not enough airspace here. I need a lot more airspace in there. Uh, again, I just built this to try it. It works, but this is going to definitely need a big upgrade. And uh, I'm going to hook the bypass up. I'm going to run this thing for the rest of the winter. And then maybe soon, because my shop's getting a little quieter now, I'm going to build a new one. It's going to be round. The outside's going to be round. The inside will be round. And there's going to be a shelf in it. And we're going to try that and see how that works. So anyways, that's good for now. Well, there you go. I'm happy to report it actually went pretty good. Um, quarter after two, that's not bad. I think I got here at 11 o'clock. Uh, I've already got a fire going in this thing again. As you can see what I have now, there's an elbow here. That's a T. So on the back side, there's actually a pipe up here in the back now, a bypass pipe with a damper on it. So normal burn right now. I just lit it. My draft is awesome again, I have to say. Um, that's all clean. Everything's clean. And I got probably 20 pounds of creosote, maybe 20, 25 pounds. Fair amount. But considering how long since I cleaned it, you know what? It wasn't that bad. But uh, that's going to stay here for the rest of the winter. And then I think what I'm actually going to end up doing is building a round one, a barrel style instead of the box. Because I think these edges are too restrictive. And there's not enough wall space in there. It's only a couple inches. And if I had to build this box, if I had like a six inch space, it'd be one thing, but I don't. I've only got about two and a half. So it heats up great, but uh, it, it probably is creating a bit of the creosote issue that I had. So anyways, that bypass on the back should help drastically. And it's a whole lot easier to light. I can tell you that just by looking at it so far. Um, very happy that's done. I'm going to actually spend the night here. going to kick back for a little bit, hang out with you guys. Might go for a little walk or something around later on, but, you know, kind of uh, stay tuned if you want. And uh, nice to have you here on a Wednesday. Beautiful afternoon it is. I wish I could explain to you guys how beautiful it is out here right now. This snow feels... <laughs> It's, uh, it's not even cold out. I think it feels wonderful. It's only like 2 degrees, I think, right now. Plus 2. 34, 35 for you guys. But it definitely feels a lot warmer. You can tell. Summer's on the way because that sun is getting a whole lot stronger. Feels so nice. Warms your bones. Warms your bones. It really does. These feeders hold out quite well, too. I'm impressed uh, how long I can get out of these. Because the birds are just constantly here. But yet this has been, well, it's, well, yeah, Wednesday. I filled these on Sunday. So, yeah, it hasn't been that long, I guess. And top them up. I think I'm going to be going through a lot of seed this year. I have a feeling. And then i got to put some in the other feeder here for the other critters. Not that I feed squirrels or endorse it, but, you know, the little guys are pretty spoiled. There we go. Clean that all out. I will get some more sunflower seed. We'll top that up. What a day to build a snowman. That's what I should be doing. Perfect day to make a snowman right now. Pretty cool even though I don't like the squirrels. I'll still give them a little bit in the other feeder. And the birds use it also, so it's not just squirrels that go on that other feeder. So let's throw a bit of seed in it. Give everybody a little meal. It's kind of funny because the squirrels climb right inside this thing. And it's kind of like they get a cabin for the weekend. They got it pretty good. <laughs> I went to leave the other day. I was standing beside it and I wish I would have had my camera or something with me because there was a squirrel inside it and he stuck his head out looking at me. All you see these two big brown eyes. It was kind of funny. Anyway, there, there's that uh, little task for now. All done. Well, there you go. It's actually nice to see. Performing awesome. Once again, my draft is back better than ever probably. It's going to be better than it was before I installed that. Uh, and I shouldn't have any problem with that plugging up as much. A lot of what happened was the ash from this pipe come down, and when that pipe was going right on top of the box, 
it went in and it filled. There was only that much of a gap. So when I took that pipe off, there was a pile of ash right there. And that's why it started blocking bad last weekend. The way I've got it now, you can see with the elbows, um, it goes out and straight up and out now. It doesn't. So the ash, if it comes back in now, the ash is going to slide and go down into this elbow way underneath the hot box and it's not going to block it above it. And it can't block the flow anyway now because again, it's got the bypass going in the rear. The uh, damper is wide open right now. It's warming up really nice in here. And the hot box is still uh, 300 degrees, 350 degrees right now. That's on the outside wall of that. And that's where the damper opens. So I'm a little concerned. I may have taken a bit of functionality away from this bad boy. I don't know yet what it's going to actually work like. But I'm uh, going to have my coffee. going to kick back here for a little bit. And then uh, just going to hang out with you guys for a while. It's kind of nice to have you back here. And, and especially on a Wednesday. Uh, I've been busy so far this week. And I get pretty much everything cleared up at home. As far as uh, small engine repair stuff. So it's kind of nice to actually have this day just to spend with you guys. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Bird feeders are getting lots of action now. One of those gray jays has been here quite a bit today. The uh, brother to the blue jay. The ones are colored like the chickadee, but they're, they're big like a blue jay. It's kind of neat to see him. He keeps getting on the uh, suet feeder out there. And it's going to be nice too this weekend. Uh, I just went on Amazon. A lot of you guys recommended this, and they're going to be awesome. I really need them. Uh, decals to put on these windows or clear decals to put on. I've been here for four hours and I've already heard three birds hit the windows. None of them hit the ground and laid on their back. They all flew away. But in just that short amount of time, I've had that many birds already hit here today. So I, it's brutal because, you know, I'm attracting them all here now with all these new feeders and stuff too. So I have to, uh, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, sticking them all over the windows. But they say they save those little guys. I'll do it for them, right? And, uh, you know, you need probably at least half a dozen of them just in this one pane. I got a pack of 48, so I've got quite a few of them to actually work with. And they're, they're all different leaf, leaf shapes, so they should be kind of nice. And they're, they're sort of see-through. They're a translucent thing, I guess. And uh, uh, the, say I got them on Amazon, and it actually said that what they do is they actually reflect UV light. This is the way they work, and the birds can actually see that, I guess. So that's how the bird can see it. So you don't really need to plaster them on the window as long as you have them, I think, six to eight inches apart on there. So, yeah, it's going to take probably six or eight just to do that, right? So hopefully the 48 I have will be enough because I get two big windows there. I got that door. I got the kitchen two windows. They hit them all the time. That one be, be uh, over top where the sink is. I don't know why, but they always hit that window for some strange reason. I don't know. I'm just going to uh, sit back and enjoy my coffee and enjoy the heat from the wood stove. It's warming up nicely in here now. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Yeah, again, there you go. I show it this way. You can see a little better even how the, uh, it, the ash is not going to, like before, this was on top of here. So the ash could go in and fall right on top of this box and it blocked it. Well, now that's all open here so because the heat's going to pass up through this way now and there's a damper this pipe in the back you can't see it but on the other side right over here there's a damper so once i close that damper off this the heat will go through here but right now most of it's going to want to go up the back it's going to be the path of least resistance as they say right so it should work quite well the way it is now though it's starting to warm up quite well in here again and uh, looks a little different, but I don't mind it. Not a big deal. You know, and overall, it looks pretty similar to what it was. So. I want your guys' opinion on something. I want to go outside and I want to show you something. I want to see what you think. And it is to do with my, uh, I don't know, I call it a chicken coop over here. I'm going to show you my chicken coop. I want to see what you guys think. Just hang on a second, all right? I just want to check and see here. Okay, so here's the deal. Okay, I bought raspberries and blackberries um, two years ago now, and I planted them here. Now there's six. There's two. Those are blackberries. These are raspberries. These are actually blueberries over here, and I've already had people tell me. You shouldn't put raspberries and blueberries that close together. Um, I can understand that. But what I want to do is, and you guys have to admit, that looks terrible. Here's what happened. Uh, the only reason, and there's actually, there's two more over here. 
Um, sorry, there's four more. There's two more blueberries and two more raspberries over here. So what happened is, I didn't have any of this chicken wire, all this up here when I first planted them. I put them all in and especially right in the center here, this one raspberry, this guy took right off big time as soon as I planted them, right? Um, dug the holes down, put a bunch of compost and fertilizer and bone meal and everything in there. They took right off. So anyways, that one grew about two or three months. I was here one night and it had great big tall shoots that looked like a jouster's hat and there's great big tall shoots and they literally within a month or two they're like five or six feet they went so high i had to actually tie them up so anyways i look out one morning and it was thrashed something destroyed the plant didn't kill it ripped almost all the leaves off broke all the branches off uh it, it took a couple of them it did it the first night and it tore them all to heck so i thought this is insane so a day or two later it did it to the ones over here so i thought you gotta be kidding me so anyways we did some research and found out the porcupines of all things i guess love to eat these they love to eat uh, raspberry and blackberries and they break the canes and all that right off well guess what right around this all happened i was out in the front field one day what do you think i saw out there <laughs> great big porcupine right and shelly was out there one day with darcy too walking her and we both seen porcupines I also have bark damage on the side of the trees here now and anyways, so I built this shelter to cover it from the porcupines. Well, the porcupines obviously haven't got it anything, they can't, it's all covered in chicken wire, but it looks absolutely terrible. And number two, am I not attracting bears right in in front of my building, you know? I've got that land out front and here's the deal. At the first part of the property, when you first come in at the top of the hill, there's already wild blueberries up there. There are wild high bush and there's a few low bush and there's actually a few of them that actually produce some berries. Um, should I take these blueberries and get them anywhere near those or should I keep them right away? Should I grow them separate? And would you guys just tear all this mess down and just individually put wire around each plant to wrap it or should i move uh, that one there is going to be really hard to move because as you know the shoots come up out of the ground it's already got 20 25 30 places where it's growing right up out of the ground it's not one central uh, stock coming up anymore so it's going to take some serious digging it's going to really hurt that plant if i dig that thing up and try to move it but i guess maybe i should before it gets any bigger but you know, I want some feedback from you guys. What do you think? Should I just leave them here, tear that all off, put an individual, like put just a, I've got obviously little guns of chicken wire. Um, should I put just like a circle around each plant and that would help kind of keep everything contained? Uh, other people seem to think, I mean, they already made the comment that I shouldn't have blueberries growing that close to the raspberry and blackberries. Um, I don't know. But let me know what you guys think, you know. Um, because as soon as spring comes, I can't stand looking at it. When I when I first built it, I thought, man, I got to do something with this. I just can't handle it, but I got to do. I'll leave it for now. But when you're sitting in the camp looking out at the brook, it absolutely destroys the view of the brook. When you're down by the brook and want to get any kind of pictures or anything, a look up at the building, it's right in your face. So it's got to go one way or the other. At least the chicken coop affair. But at least again, the plants have been kind of saved the last couple of years by building that but it's got to go but again give me your advice should i move them should i just redo them here wrap them up or should i get them right away from the building anyway because i'm asking for trouble and if i'm going to move them when should i move them in the spring early before they even leaf out uh, let me know chime in appreciate it also over here i've got there's a grapevine down here concord i think that one is uh, that's a grapevine there's another grapevine over there by the corner of the building. That one's called a Bac Noir, and that's a dark red grape, I guess, for making wine. That one grew and right up into the rafters here last year. Grows amazing. Uh, this one here just started taking off. Uh, I planted it once, and then I watched a rabbit actually eat it on me one day. He decided he wanted the grapevine worse than I did, and I'm watching from the window in there, and I seen this little rabbit hop here. I didn't think anything of it. Come out later and looked, and he ate it right off, so I had to replant it. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's a Concord. That's a Bach Noir. And I've got one over there, and I forget the name of it. I forget what it is right now uh, that I put in there. Uh, it'll come to me if it does. I'll let you guys know. But, anyways, I was kind of wanting to grow clematis vines on this 
can you put a clematis close to a grapevine or is that no 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 um, this arbor because as you know it's a pretty beautiful thing but again this is going to be a grapevine i'd kind of like to have it kind of train it so it goes up all around and maybe just leave the little chickadee right there um, just leave the great vines i guess there and uh, maybe let them just grow and do their thing and eventually it'll take some time to fill it out but i would love to have some clematis here also because they're such a beautiful plant as you guys would know especially when they flower and uh, we get a lot of hummingbirds here too so that'd be kind of nice to see that uh, i'll have hummingbird feeders out lots of them here in the summer too be kind of cool to film some of those guys put them in slow motion they ever look neat when they just hover and you can see when you slow it right down when a hummingbird is flying it's gonna be kind of cool stuff stay tuned I take you guys for a little walk out front. It is such an absolutely amazing day out here right now. It is absolutely amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I just can't get over the sun, how strong it already is getting for this time of year. So. And I'm glad I came in today because it's mild. I've already put a really nice track. I've already packed it down quite well, so I'll have no problem getting out of here tomorrow. This as much as I would love to stay, <laughs> you know, I can't stay, uh, can't stay for too long. Got to go back to the real world here eventually. But anyways, we'll be back again on Friday, so I mean, that will only be a couple days. Won't be long, because it's Wednesday now. So I hope you guys are enjoying this content. You know what, if you are, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the thing in the bottom there. I can definitely use it, trying to build up my channel. It's absolutely amazing to have you guys here with me. We're gonna stop and talk to Tin Man for a minute, see what he's doing. So what are you thinking, Tin Man? What are you thinking, buddy? He's he just hasn't been impressed with the winter over here. He said it's just, you know, it's 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 cold. <laughs> and especially when you're metal. When you're metal, it's it's pretty cold. So I actually want to get a solar panel and stick it on him. And I want to put something in it to make his eyes glow red at night so when people go by here. In, uh, in the summer in ATVs or whatever, they kind of have a little freak show when they go by. They kind of be surprised when they see it. But anyway, this is actually a pretty nice flower bed here too. It's hard to see right now. But I got a little rock wall and all that all the way around here pretty a couple years ago. 
I have a, uh, what do I get in here? I have a bleeding heart plant. I have a peony in there that uh, just started coming up quite nice last year. Nice little peony. Uh, a few hostas in there. I have some tiger lilies in there, which are kind of neat. Spread them around a bit. Brought some of that stuff from my house. I've got hostas everywhere at my house. So I was thinking what it might look nice someday eventually is to have a... Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have a road on both sides of the driveway going in there? And they grow so well in the shade also, right? I could start with this side. Maybe this year, maybe I should in the spring, split a bunch. And uh, I could take my rototiller I've got, a nice tiller here. I could till up a strip all along here. And as you know, you can almost throw them on a rock and they'll grow. I mean, they're quite easy to grow. And a, uh, a nice row of hostas down there. Might look kind of nice, wouldn't it? And then over here... As I was saying, I wanted to show you guys. Let's see what you think. Because this front field, the nice thing about it too, it gets full sun all day out here, right? Like what a place to have solar and everything else out in this field. Because, uh, don't mind my shadow, but anyway. Right here is where I put in my vegetable garden all along here. Down the lower part of the hill. I mow this whole hill with my uh, lawn tractor. So anyways, in here is where they start. There's some wild blueberries in there and all up here. This is actually one right here sticking out of the snow. That's actually wild blueberry bush is you know, quite evident. Anybody that knows their shrubs, that's what this guy is. So, And that's a high bush. Uh, there's a couple more over there. There's some low bush ones. There's a, there's a fair amount in here. So. Could I bring my domesticated ones? Should I put them up here? Should I keep them right away from these? You don't want them cross-pollinating? Like, I don't really know how this is supposed to work, right? And uh, because again, I've got all kinds of room out here to plant them. Um, just depends where, I guess, right? You know, this whole front, uh, and I get a nice size cleared little area out here, right? And this is all, again, grass and I mow all this. This isn't really good lawn up here. Down the lower part here, they're actually pretty nice lawn here in the summer. So I've got the lawn tractor in the garage and stuff. So I keep her trimmed up the best I can. Great big snow bank here already. It's almost a drift that formed. But yeah, right here is all veggie garden, right? It's probably 12 feet wide, 12 by 20. It's only fairly small. It's not a big garden, but anyways, that'd be my veggie garden. And again, wild blueberries on the edge and then up top. So where do you guys suggest I should put, if I move all those shrubs out here, where do I put them? And then if I move them out here, should I still wrap them? Because I'm sure the porcupine, if he'll go in there and eat them, we see him sit out here all the time in the field. He's going to have a heyday if we bring them out here, I'm sure. Uh, it'll be survival of the fittest, and you know who's going to win on that one, right? Because uh, those things eat a lot. So I could even see damage on some of the trees in here that I think is done... You know, porcupine damage also. That's what people are telling me, so not sure, but we'll go for a walk in here. I'm just going to show you and see what you guys think about this, if it is actually uh, porcupine damage or not. I'm going to show you a tree. I noticed it on one of the other trees a couple weeks ago over by the uh, wood pile. And then we just noticed it on the tree out front here. I noticed it, I think last week I was here, that the bark is all taken. It's only off one side of the tree. So, kind of makes sense, I guess. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys and see what you think here. Just bear with me. See what you actually think. It's, yeah, it's quite evident to see. Check this tree out. Look at there. And look it up. See the way the bark's all coming off it? The whole way up. And it passed the roof. I don't know how well you guys can see, but this is going to be a good one too. This right here is almost going to qualify for a Davy Dum Dum. You see the way this is overhanging the camp? And it's tangled in the tree beside it. Well, somebody told me that before I built the building, I should probably cut this tree. Well, I was in a rush and I didn't want to cut it. Look how tall it is. Look how straight it is. A pole, right? Anyways, <laughs> I have bought some tree climbing spears. And I haven't tried them yet. But I've got to go up that bad boy and I have to limit the best I can. 
get all the overhanging limbs that are hanging all over the building. I'm good at falling a tree, but I can tell you right now, it is so weighted on one side that it doesn't matter how good I notch at, and if I even wedge it, I think it's still going to come right over towards the building. It's going to want to go sideways when I cut it. Um, way too much, and it's tangled a bit in the other tree at the top up here. So, it's going to be quite a show, I'm sure, but I'm going to have to literally get up there with uh, the tree spears I bought and try climbing her. And what I'm going to do is in the spring here, when I get energetic, I'm just going to play around low here till I get comfortable. And I have an electric chainsaw, a nice little small one, right, which I can go up there with and just run it off the inverter and that with an extension cord, put a rope, pull it up, and just go very, very careful and just limb by limb and go up and limb this tree. Get as much as I can off it and then drop her and hope for the best. And uh, I'm trying to try to drop it right in behind the camp there. And normally I'm a pretty good shot when I want to drop a tree down. I can normally put it where I want it. But uh, this guy here is a bit concerning for me. But anyways, this was quite a little rant I went on. Back to the bark situation on that tree. I would say that's probably done from porcupines. So again, what do I do out front? Uh, if I try to move my stuff out there, are they just going to have a heyday with it? Let me know. Chime in, guys. Well, my friends, I am very happy to report today was a total success. Stove is working amazing once again, fully controllable. I can go from full burn down to just nice and idle and control it. Shut the damper down, it's tame, it's, it's perfect. Open it up, uh, I can open the door, there's no backdrafting at all. It's the way it should be. You can open the door, run it like a fireplace now if you want. Anyway, sorry about the long video. This is the longest one I've ever done. I uh, did a fair amount here today and talked to you guys a little bit here extra today too. And I hope you guys don't mind. I hope you don't think it was too much of a run-on video. Um, I appreciate your input on everything. It's wonderful having all you guys here, as I say, time after time. And uh, you know what? Uh, I'll be back here in two days to make another video. So again, this is Wednesday now. We'll be back here on Friday going at her again for you guys. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. And I did a pretty cool uh, time lapse here tonight showing this place from the front here as the sun went down. Hang around right till the end and watch it. It came out pretty nice, I think. I love doing those. Use a GoPro for it. Anyways, once again, it was so wonderful to have you guys here. I hope you, uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, like it on the bottom. I'd appreciate that. And once again, uh, if you do nothing else, please just try to live simply and just remain grateful. Thank you so much.